from, uh, and this is for those of you that uh, maybe haven't gotten it, it's question 13 from 2.3. Um, there's two ways of doing this, okay? And I don't want to do it um, maybe the most direct way, uh, first with our calculator, and then see maybe how we could alter the equation on the inequality and do it with our calculator. It might make things a little bit simpler with our calculator, okay? The first thing I want you to understand, though, whenever we see a question like this, we're going to do this equality one first. Whenever you want to do an inequality, that's what the, the, uh, the ultimate goal of this question is, is to be able to answer that inequality at the bottom, okay? But to do that, the, the first thing you always want to do is find out where the graphs are equal, okay? Or where the, the functions are equal or the expressions are equal. Because then, if we know where things are equal, everywhere else they're unequal, right? Everywhere else we have inequality. And then we just have to decide which type of unequalness do we want for this particular problem, okay? Um, whether we want greater than or less than. So when we look at this one, um, what I want you guys to understand is that graph right there, we call that a cubic, okay? Uh, and ultimately, it's going to look, let me make this a little bit bigger for you, it's going to look something kind of like that. That's what every cubic function looks like. Okay. Now they can be moved left, right, up, down. They can be reflected across either axes, that kind of stuff. But it kind of looks like an inverted S. Does that make sense? Okay. You have to tilt your head, maybe to the side. Looks like an S. Um, what's this thing? Parabola, right? Okay. And it's because negative out in front. We've got a negative to the whole thing. Yes, we talked about a negative being. Um, a reflection across the x-axis. So that, uh, now and it might be moved up, down, whatever, I'm not sure, um, left, right. But those are kind of the two graphs that we should develop. Does that make sense? And basically when we graph these together on the calculator, because that's what they tell you to do, um, we are going to be looking at where those things intersect, okay? Um, now there's, we're gonna use the TIA 384 right now, but there are some other calculators out there that might be a little bit better. Anybody ever use that? Desmos? I think that's how you say it. Um, it's, a, it's a graphing tool that it's relatively new, maybe two, three years old, uh, but it is kind of taking over the market. It's free, but it's taking over the market for TI-89, or not 89, TI-884s. Uh, because these calculators, TI-884s, they haven't, you know, I use the same ones in uh, 2000. Okay, and mine was my brother's when he graduated in 1997. Okay, uh, and his was uh, a hand-me-down for someone else. So they're all the same from like 1990 to now. These calculators, they added color stuff to them. They've got skinnier. Uh, some of them are rechargeable, uh, but function-wise, they still do the same thing that they did in 1990 to now. Right? So when you go buy one, that's why I would say buy 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 a used one because they really haven't updated very much. Um, Desmos is, is a much more complete uh, graphing tool uh, and allows you to kind of mess with your window a little bit better uh, than what the TI-884 does. Um, it's also, it's, it's, a, it's like an Apple, you know, there's an, I got it on my phone, uh, so you got, it's kind of nerdy in it. Um, but I got it on my phone, it works on your phone, works on an iPad, works on your computer. Uh, they got, you can download it, I believe, on your computer, and it's also got like a web interface where you just go to the, the, the web page and deal with it. Uh, so maybe if we have time towards the end period, we'll, we'll kind of show you how convenient that is. Uh, I like, you know, obviously you guys know I like GeoGebra, uh, does the same thing, uh, but Desmos is, is maybe a little bit more aligned with how you use your TIA 3s, 84s. With GeoGebra, you got to kind of have a learning curve uh, with uh, like the syntax or the way you type stuff in. Um, but Desmos is more like how you type stuff in on calculator. Uh, but that being said, let's do this problem. Shut up. All right. Do you guys, I don't know, it's mostly for the people behind in the back. Do you prefer that you see this here? Is that detached screen a little bit easier to see? Okay. Um, so let's just try it to graph y equals... Um, x cubed plus 
four x squared. Uh, no, we did it in last class differently the second time, so I'll erase that. So that's the first side, right? That's the, the, the cubic. Um, and, and I'm just going to show you kind of graphically what that looks like right now. Uh, and it's that, okay? Uh, which is exactly what we kind of anticipated it looking like over here. Um, now, if I go to my uh, y2 and I plug in the right-hand side, negative uh, x squared plus 5x plus 3, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys know you can do this. I've got two things typed in. Maybe I only, only want to graph the parabola. I'm going to go up to the equal sign of the cubic and hit enter. And see how I unhighlighted it? That means that's not going to graph that one. I just want to graph, and now it just puts the quadratic in. Does that make sense? Okay. Now you see my window's kind of jacked up, right? It's, it's different. And it's messed up because in the last class, we did another problem. We messed with the window. So every time I do something from problem to problem, my window doesn't default back to normal. Okay. Uh, you have to manually go back and adjust your window to normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to zoom six. I think if uh, a lot of times when you're in a graph, um, and, and you're not seeing maybe everything you want to see, you need to uh, to go back to normal. Okay. Uh, now in this one here, it, it, just because of the pixels, and this is another reason why I like GeoGebra or Desmos or whatever. Uh, it's, this is kind of jagged and ugly looking, right? It's not really a smooth curve because of the pixels. Um, we, we see that we probably have, obviously, an intersection maybe right, right there, an intersection right there. And hopefully you can kind of interpolate and determine that there's going to be, oh, there's going to be an intersection when these two things start kind of converging over here. There's going to be another intersection over here, right? Okay, so if you get an error, then there's a couple different reasons you might be getting an error. What error does it say? Error okay, so syntax is grammar for math, basically. Okay, so uh, like if I have, and I bet it's coming here, because if I put I put a negative sign there, if you put a minus and then graph, so graph the first one, so try to graph the second one. And mine broke my calculator. <laughs> uh, okay. What in the world? I don't know. You do. <laughs> you put the normal negative. Uh, okay, so. X cubed plus 4 X squared. I'll, c I'll come look at yours in a moment and... The syntax just tells you that somewhere, somewhere there is uh, a grammar issue. Uh, now, you see how my, my, it restarted, and I don't know why I did this, but it, now it changed the way my graphing, my tools look like my, my math print, and it, it basically it opened for some reason a new uh, operating system. Um, <laughs> you remember the other day when I asked you guys to go to mode? And, and you could scroll down, and the other day mine wouldn't go down to next, right? But now I've got that next option, and mine's on math print. I hate math print. I'm gonna go to class. It's just, it just, I'm more comfortable with it. Uh, and now when I go and, and start typing stuff in, it's back to, back to that. So, um, let me look yours and see what the. Uh, okay, so here, here's what, here's what was, here's what was happening with, uh, with uh, Carson's. He had, for some reason, and, and understand when you let somebody borrow your calculator, 
they do stuff with it, and they might be trying to be silly with you or funny with you. They might go all the way to Y zero and do that. And so his did he had a, a negative one. It's, it's an inverse operation. Uh, and then if we go to graph, the graph, hold on. It'll graph what we have in Y1 and Y2. Now it's going through and looking for all the other Ys. And it gets the Y0, Y10, basically. And now it says syntax. Don't quit. When you ever have syntax, don't quit. Go to go to. And it's going to put your cursor where that syntax error is. And now it goes down and shows me that syntax error. Okay? Some of you are also having this issue. And, and I don't know because my calculator just restarted. I don't think this is going to really be anything that... Uh, I think it'll probably still graph. Yeah, okay, good. Did it. Uh, it says invalid dimension. Okay, you may graph and see, get that? Yeah. Okay, what that means is you see how I highlighted that plot up there? Okay, that plot, and, and usually this happens after you've uh, been maybe in a science class or um, done a lab where you had to do a scatter plot and you, you typed lists in. This is trying to, when I put plot one, it's trying to access a list to make a scatter plot. And right now, I don't have any lists defined, so it's looking at those lists that are undefined, and it doesn't know what to do. Okay? Um, on highlighting that plot, we'll fix that. Okay? Um, those are the main two, the major uh, errors that we get a lot of times when we try to graph something. Um, last class, uh, like we were looking at the, the function that we dealt with, uh, and when we graphed it, none of the intersections, or I guess one, maybe one of the intersections, just because of the coefficients, one of the intersection points showed up, the others two, the other two didn't. Kind of like here, two of them are showing up, this third one isn't, right? Um, we had to adjust the window. And that's what I don't like about the CIA 3 or 4 is that to adjust your window, you have to do some trial and error, and you have to take uh, uh, some time to kind of develop that skill and that um, Ability to go back and forth and, and to readjust things uh, so that you can get that full that full image. Okay, um, here I don't think this problem. We need, really need to do anything in regards to adjusting the window. Um, so we can go ahead and just start finding these intersection points. But depending on your coefficients, because they change. So some I think last class had a nine here, and maybe this was a seven. Okay, I think that's really maybe the only difference. And, and it completely changed the, the window, the where place where intersections were, that we had to manipulate the window a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to find these intersection points, okay? Um, and, and you might be a person that, well, let's just do it this way. Let's say I, I, I know that there's intersection points in here, right? Okay? So I'm going to actually, because I don't like the way it looks, I'm going to go to zoom box. And I'm just going to zoom in. Crop that out, hit enter. All right, and now it looks like a much smoother curve. And now it looks like those are a little, it's a little bit less choppy when I look at the graph, right? Okay. Now it's only going to give me two of the intersection points. We'll have to go back and adjust things to get that third one that was outside those that box that I, that I created. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we go second calc, which is uh, the actual says the trace on it. Okay. Um, we're going to intersect, which is option five. Now it says first curve, so uh, I'm move my. I'm going to do this first inter intersection over here on the left. So I just got to move to where I'm close to that intersection. Excuse me. Hit enter. Now it's going to jump me to my second curve. Now my second curve, I'm going to move my cursor so I can start seeing it again. It started me off the page. All right, you see the x values of negative uh, eight or point eight and a y value of negative two. Well, I don't have a negative y axis being shown, so I know my cursor is maybe down here somewhere. So I just start moving it to where I can see it. Close to where I think the intersection point is. Hit enter. Okay. It says guess. That's not a guess. They're going to find you the right answer. Hit enter. And it's negative 0.43. Okay. So negative 0.43 is one of my intersection points. So let me write that down. Negative 0.43 is one of them. Then we're going to do the exact same thing. But we're going to do it for this one up here. So I'm going to go second calc again. Go to five. Move my cursor. And it doesn't really matter which curve is your first curve, which one's your second. So, and you can jump back and forth between the two by pushing the up and down keys. Um, if I move close to where I think that intersection is, hit enter. 
puts me on the other curve, usually puts me close to that where that intersection should be on the other curve. Hit enter, guess, I hit enter again, and I get 1.21. Okay, so 1.21 is another one. And now we do have that other one down here. Don't forget that third one we had. So I'm going to adjust my window. And this is where um, we just have to be um, kind of understanding of what the what the graph looked like. And the first thing, maybe the first thing when you adjust the window, you go to standard first. So I go zoom six, and it's going to zoom me out. Okay, and now I want the intersection that comes down here. Okay, so maybe you have to go to your window and ch change your Y maximum. I don't care my Y maximum right now because I'm looking for that, that intersection that was below um, the X axis. I don't need the Y maximum to be a positive number. Maybe I just let it be zero. My Y minimum now is, is a lot lower. Maybe I let it be 30. I'm going to go by fives. Uh, and, and just going to graph and see what that does and see if that, that helps me find that other intersection. Close, right? Okay, we see that they're, they're converging, they're getting closer to one another. Uh, and really, I could actually go second calc right now and find those intersections because they're close enough. Uh, but I'm going to adjust the window again, and maybe we go down to 60. Maybe I go by a scale of 10 and graph it. And there we're seeing that other intersection point, right? So now I'm going to go second calc. Go down to five, intercept. First curve, we see that my, you see your Y values are positive right now, right? So my, my cursor's up here somewhere. So I'm going to keep moving that until those Y values are getting smaller and smaller. And now I can see that cursor. Hit enter. Jumps me to the other curve. Now my Y value is negative. It's right here, I guess, is the, the cursor. Uh, so that's close to the intersection point. Hit enter. Guess, and it gives me negative five point. I think it's saying two. My cursor's in the way. Well, that's stupid. I was negative five, negative five point two. Okay, so those are the uh, three places where these two graphs are equal. Okay, uh, and that was I'm gonna go back to six, zoom six. Um, but that was where they were equal. So that was answering this first question. Okay. So we type in negative 0.43, 1.21, and negative 5.2. Okay. But the next question is, where are these things unequal? Okay. Where is the cubic? Okay. Where is the cubic greater than or equal to? So greater than or equal to means y values are bigger, right? Y values are above. Uh, the quadratic. So we're asking the question, okay, when is the cubic y values greater than or above the quadratic y values? Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just so we can visualize this a little bit better, I'm going to pull this up and we're gonna, I'm going to draw on this with some colors. So let's see, I'm just going to draw the, the cubic in red. There's my cubic. Now I'll take the quadratic and do that in blue. All right. So we found where they were equal, right? Okay. Uh, and, and remember that they do come down here um, and start intersecting again down here uh, at what was negative 5.2, I think. Um, but when I asked how are they unequal, when is the cubic above the um, quadratic at like a point right here. Just think about that point right there. So that's at like an x value of like negative 4, okay? Is that y value right there for the red curve, is it greater than a y value that would be on the blue curve at that x value? So right here, the red is above the blue, right? Okay, so to the left of that point right there, to the left of that point, okay, and that intersection point we found to be uh, that negative, was it negative, can I not move this? Negative 0.43, so that, that x value right there, 
is negative 0.43. So to the left of negative 0.43, the red value, the red y values are above the blue ones. Okay? And that's what we wanted. We wanted the cubic to be greater than um, the quadratic. Okay? But if you kind of interpret what's going on here, as we move, and this is going to kind of make it disappear. Yep, I didn't want that back. As we move uh, down this curve here, okay, and we move down that curve right there, and this is a problem with how uh, my window is not showing that other intersection point. They're going to cross again, right? Well, when they cross again, they change whether they're above or below one another. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, at every point of, of intersection, they, they change that behavior. So right now, they're, they're going to cross here again at negative 0.5 or negative 5.2. Okay, so they're equal at negative 5.2, but to the right of negative 5.2, the red one is above the blue one. Okay, and that's what we want. So between negative 5.2 to negative 0.43, okay, between those two x values, would you agree that the red curve is above the blue one? Okay. Now, if I look at, oh, it's getting messy. If I look at this region here, all those ordered pairs for both curves, the blue y values are bigger than the red y values, aren't they? That's not what we want. That's that's saying that the quadratic is greater than the cubic, and that's not what we want. Okay. So we don't put that uh, information in. But now, after that, okay, we get to this intersection point again, okay? And after that intersection point, can I say that y value right there is bigger than maybe that y value? They're, they're really, really hard to, to highlight both because this is very steep. Um, but after that intersection point, and we start looking at the x values to the right of that intersection point, if this goes away again, I'm going to be upset. All right. So that y value is greater than the y value. So the y values that are red are greater than the y values that are blue to the right of that point right there. So that point was 1.21. Okay, so I'm going to write 1.21. And then to the right of that, to the right of 1.21, do we still have all this stuff over here? All of that set of y values in both curves, is the red one always going to be above the blue one? Yeah. And that goes on to infinity. And then we union. Okay? Now, what is nice is that once I know that, once I know where the, uh, the cubic is above the quadratic, do we automatically not know when the cubic is below the quadratic? Yeah, okay? Because it's everywhere else, right? So to the left of negative 5.2, we have the uh, we have that the, the cubic would be less than the, the quadratic. And then between these two values, between uh, negative 4 point, or negative 0.43 and 1.21, we have uh, the cubic being less than the quadratic. So once you find one equality by default and understand what a number line looks like and how uh, inequalities help make up a number line, uh, you can find the, the other set of values. Uh, last class, we, we did this. Instead of dealing with, and, and we did it mainly because their equation was nasty and the picture was ugly, when we um, uh, put in the y1 and y2, can I do this? x cubed plus 4x squared plus x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Does that say do the same thing that does? Yeah. So now when I graph it, I'd be looking, instead of looking at where two different curves intersect and where one's above the other, now we're looking at where a cubic, it's going to look like this. It's going to do something like that. We'd be looking where that cubic is above y equals zero, so above the x-axis, and that will give us the exact same range or domain values. Uh, I'll put email, in, before third period, email me some questions that you might have about that assignment. And during third period, I'm going to put a video together and post on the website for, for review of questions. Sorry that took the whole period. <laughs>